Welcome to another video. We're going to take the limit of this multivariable function as x, y, and z approach 0. Now, what you're expected to do when you evaluate any limit is to directly plug in the values into the function. So if we plug in 0, 0, 0 for x, y, z, we're going to get 0 times 0 times 0, and here we're going to get 0 in the bottom, so it's 0 over 0, the indeterminate form. The problem is, this is multivariable calculus, there is no L'Hopital's rule. So what do you do? You start thinking, maybe I can do some algebraic manipulation, because I don't want to do anything that was going to give me 0 over 0. So I'm going to assume that mm, x is equal to y, and it's equal to z. So if you replace x, if you replace y and z with x, what happens is on top you're going to have x squared times x squared times x squared. So you have x to the sixth. Down here you're going to have 3 times x squared. By the time you divide, you're going to end up with a limit of 0 because the only thing you're going to have is just x. You've already said x is everything else. So it's going to be as x goes to 0, this is going to go to 0 right? Now, if you assume you're right, you are not right. Oh, you, the answer is correct, but that's not how you show that the limit is equal to zero, because what you've done is you have shown a one-sided limit. Yeah, because if this was a if this was a single variable calculus, you are just taking one-sided limit because you're choosing which direction to approach from. Well, you have to find another direction to approach to see that the limits are the same. So, you have to do something else. Whatever you do, you might get zero, you might not get zero. If you get zero again, well, your work is not done because you've only chosen two directions. How many directions do you have to take to approach the center of a field? infinitely many directions. So, if the limit exists, you have to go in every direction to prove it. Unless plugging in did not require any further manipulation. But, if when you plugged it in, you didn't get your answer straight, you can no longer use algebraic manipulation. You will have to do epsilon delta proof and if you hate epsilon delta proof, or you're afraid of them, then the spherical coordinate method is your friend. And that's what I want to do in this video. Let's get into it. In this video, I'm just going to focus on how to compute this limit. I will not explain the whole conversion. I'm just going to show you what you're supposed to do. In another video, I will go up to the three variable limit. I think I talked about the two variable limit before and how to do the conversion, but we already talked about X and Y, but now we've got Z. So what's going to happen is, yeah, let's just write the conversion, okay? From Cartesian to um, spherical coordinates. So for the spherical coordinates, we're going to say that z is equal to rho cosine phi. And we're going to say that x is equal to rho. You know that. It's going to be cosine theta. This one, we know. Okay, sine phi. And y is going to be rho sine theta sine phi. Now, look at it and see how easy it is for you to remember. Rho is the radius of the sphere. So what we're trying to do is, instead of us approaching the point from different direction, we're going to approach the point with a sphere, it's like a ball. So we're gonna create a ball around that point and we're gonna shrink the ball gradually to that point. So it's approaching from every direction possible. You know, when you shrink a ball, nothing escapes. 
so we don't have to try many different directions. You shrink the ball into zero, zero, zero. So, and this is, these are the three directions from the X, Y, Z um, directions. We have converted them into spherical coordinates. So now we're about to shrink the ball to the point zero, zero, zero. All we have to do is to rewrite this limit in terms of this, okay? And what usually happens, what, what's important in, when it comes to spherical coordinates, the most important thing is your row, okay? The row is getting smaller, the radius will get smaller and smaller and smaller. So what's the radius in this case? Well, we know that our radius is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which in this case is the square root of 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is equal to 0. So we're going to be using 0 as the value of rho. That's all we need to do. Now, these will be going, we're going to have these ang this angle, we're going to have this angle. Some books don't write their phi this way, they write it a different way, it doesn't matter. But this is what we know, that we have rho, we have theta, and we have phi. So let's take this limit in spherical coordinate form. I wanted to save time, so I have written x, y, and z using these replacements, and I squared them. So the top, this is what I have. This is x. It is rho cosine theta sine phi squared, or phi squared, like people say it. Rho sine theta sine phi squared, and that's what you have. Now, and the bottom is squared. And see, the only thing we have here is rho, because rho is what is reducing. The angles can change forever, but one thing we know is that rho is approaching zero because we want to shrink this. It's the limit. We're getting closer and closer to the point, so the sphere is getting smaller. And remember, rho must be positive, so we can only approach from the positive direction. There is no negative rho. And that's why I had to put a plus sign here. Everything else is just for you to do the simplification and get your answer. Remember, we already suspected from the beginning that the answer is going to be zero when we went in one direction and we thought in the second direction we'll still get zero, but it was not sufficient. So now what do we do? We're going to square. So this is now equal to the limit as rho approaches zero from the right. And if you square this, square this and square this, you're going to get rho squared here, rho squared here, rho squared here. So you're going to get rho to the sixth, actually. And then, okay, and then what do we have in the bottom? In the bottom, we're going to have a square, we're going to have a square, a square, but because there's a plus between them, we're going to pull out all the phi squareds. So we have this, so this is cosine squared theta sine squared phi. Um, and then you have, so we need to put this in parentheses, we're going to have plus sine squared theta sine squared phi, and we're going to have plus, this is going to be cosine squared phi. Okay, so is there any simplification in the bottom? Cosine squared theta plus sine squared, oh, the two of them have this in common, so we can factor that out, and then we can cancel this so that what we have is the limit as rho approaches zero from the right of, this is going to be rho to the fourth, and nothing simplifies here. We're still going to have cosine squared theta, sine squared theta, sine to the fourth of phi, cosine squared of phi. And in the denominator now I have, so I have sine squared phi plus sine squared phi, so I can pull sine squared phi out, so I have sine squared phi into, this is going to be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta plus cosine squared phi. Nice. I like that. <laughs> and this is going to be the limit as rho approaches zero from the right. And now if you write this out, this is going to be rho 
nothing changes here. You still have cosine squared theta, sine squared theta, sine to the fourth, or five cosine squared. Ah, tired of saying all the words. And what do you have here? This is going to be one, right? So this is sine squared phi times one plus cosine squared phi. Well, we know that this is going to be sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi, which is just one. This equals one. Everything in the denominator. So what we have here, so we don't need to worry about whether we're dividing by anything weird or not. And now we can take our limit. Hey, this is to the fourth. So if you plug in zero here, you just whatever these are, anything times zero is zero. Anything times zero. As long as this is not infinity. I'm sure this is not infinity. And that's our answer. Now I have shown that this limit is equal to zero. Cha! Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.